Welcome back. In this lecture, I would like to work out some example problems. Uh, before I uh, start uh, discussing these problems, let me give the stepwise uh, procedure for solving these problems. Uh, this is the suggested procedure. The first step uh, is uh, obviously you have to read the problem carefully and list the input data. And the second important step is you draw the sketch of the system and the cycle on uh, TS or PH charts and label all the state points. And step 3 is obtain property data for all the state points either from the input or from property database or from property relations. And step number 4 is obtain the required output parameters by applying relevant mass and energy balance equations across the components or system. Finally, you have to check the units for consistency. So, if you proceed in a systematic manner, uh, solving these problems will be very, very easy. Okay? So, systematic procedure is always uh, better. So, now let us go to some of the typical uh, problems. The first problem is on air cycle refrigeration system. The problem statement is like this. A closed air cycle refrigeration system based on reverse Brayton cycle incorporates a regenerative heat exchanger which has an effectiveness of 0.8. The temperature and pressure of air at the exit of low temperature heat exchanger are minus 30 degrees centigrade and 100 kilopascal respectively. And the temperature of air at the inlet to compressor is 10 degrees centigrade. And the pressure at the exit to the compressor is 1000 kilopascals. This is the problem statement. It is a simple uh, air cycle reference system. Uh, only one change is there is an additional component that is a regenerative heat exchanger. It is also mentioned that we have to assume no frictional pressure drops and compression and expansion processes to be reversible and adiabatic. And uh, under these assumptions and from the given data, we have to find the required mass flow rate for a refrigeration capacity of 100 kilowatts, a required volumetric flow rate of air at compressor inlet and the system COP. And uh, for calculation purposes, we can assume air to be perfectly dry with a specific heat Cp of 1.005 kilojoule per kg Kelvin and specific heat ratio gamma of 1.4 and gas constant for air, you can take it as 0.287 kilojoule per kg Kelvin. And uh, the second part of the problem is we have to compare the performance of this system with a system which does not have a regenerative heat exchanger. That means, you have to compare this system with a simple system which does not have a regenerative heat exchanger. And for the simple system, the input data is uh, the temperatures and uh, at the compressor and turbine inlet are minus 30 degree centigrade and 20 degree centigrade respectively. And pressures are same as before that is 100 kilopascal and 1000 kilopascal. Now, this figure here shows the schematic of the system. So, you can see that we have the four basic components that is uh, turbine, compressor, uh, low temperature heat exchanger where the refrigeration uh, is produced and the high temperature heat exchanger where heat rejection takes place. In addition to these uh, four basic components, we have an uh, additional component that is the regenerative heat exchanger. Now, if you look at the schematic, uh, you can understand the purpose of regenerative heat exchanger. The purpose uh, of regenerative heat exchanger is to pre-cool the air that is going to the turbine. That means, the air <coughs> that is going to the turbine that is 0.5 will be pre-cooled if you use a regenerative heat exchanger. How is it getting pre-cooled? It gets pre-cooled by extra by rejecting heat to the cold air stream that is going to the compressor. So, you can see that in the regenerative heat exchanger, cold air coming from the low temperature heat exchanger uh, extract heat from the hot air that is going to the turbine. Okay. So, as a result, uh, you are able to pre-cool the air that is going to the turbine and we will see that when you pre-cool the air, the temperature at the inlet to the low temperature heat exchanger will be reduced. So, this is the purpose of using a regenerative heat exchanger. Now, let me show the cycle on uh, TS diagram. As I said, uh, the sec uh, second uh, step is to show the uh, cycle. So, here I am uh, using a TS diagram and let me explain the uh, various processes. Let me begin at this point. This is the inlet to the compressor. So, the air is compressed reversibly and adiabatically. So, entropy remains constant during this process. So, this is the reversible and uh, adiabatic compression. Okay. And uh, during this process, the pressure increases from 100 kilopascal to 1000 kilopascal and you can also see that uh, temperature is also increasing because of the compression. Okay. 
Next process is process 3 to 4. Process 3 to 4 is the heat rejection process in the high temperature heat exchanger. Okay, so this is the heat rejection process in the high temperature heat exchanger. During this process, the pressure remains constant. That means it's an idea. Uh, it's an isobaric process. So pressure doesn't change. The temperature reduces because it is rejecting heat to the external heat sink. Then process 4 to 5 is the heat exchange process that is taking place in the regenerative heat exchanger. So in this process the temperature drops because uh, the hot air exchanges heat with the cold air that is coming from the low temperature heat exchanger. Okay. So uh, uh, as a result this uh, during this process the pressure or temperature reduced from 4 to 5 whereas the pressure remained constant at 1000 kilopascal. And the process 5 to 6 uh, this process is uh, isentropic expansion isentropic expansion in the turbine. So during this process as you can see the pressure reduces from 1000 kilopascal to 100 kilopascal. As a result the temperature drops okay. and uh, since this is an isentropic process the entropy remains constant. Okay. And process finally process 6 to 4, 6 to 4 is a heat, uh, this process 6 to 4 is the actual heat extraction process during which you get the uh, useful refrigeration. Okay, and uh, this is again an isobaric process. This uh, process is taking place at 100 kilopascal uh, pressure. And during this process, because of the heat transfer to the air, air temperature increases from uh, six to one. Okay, so this is the process. And finally, process one to two. Process one to two is what is taking place in the regenerative heat exchanger. As I have already explained, during this process, uh, heat, heat is transferred from the hot air, that is from four to five to the cold air that is going to the compressor. As a result, the temperature increases whereas the pressure remains constant. So these are the six uh, processes in this cycle. Now let me, uh, from the uh, input data, we know that the temperature at this point, that is at the exit of the low temperature heat exchanger is minus 30 degree centigrade. We know this temperature. Okay, and we also know the pressure. So immediately we can locate this point. And it is also given that the temperature at the inlet to the compressor is plus 10 degree centigrade. That means this temperature is also given. Since this pressure is also same as 100 kilopascal, we can also locate this point. That means this point is known to us and this point is known to us. Now we have to find out remaining points, state points. First let us look at point 3. How do we find the uh, point 3? We know that this process is the isentropic compression process. So for this process we can write one equation as P2 V2 to the power of gamma is P3 V3 to the power of gamma. This is one equation and for uh, each point we can write uh, for example P2 V2 we can write it as RT2 because we are assuming air to be an ideal gas. Similarly you can write P3 V3 is RT3. Okay. So these are the equations. From these equations, we have seen that you can finally write for this process, uh, if you are eliminating uh, specific volume for this process, ultimately you can show that the temperature T3 by T2 is given by P3 by P2 to the power of gamma minus 1 by gamma. Okay. Uh, this is a expression which relates the temperatures with pressures. And we know the pressures. P3 is known. P3 is nothing but 1000 kilopascal. P2 is known which is equal to 100 kilopascal. So this side we know and gamma is 1.4 and the T2 is known to us which is given as the input. So for using this equation we can find out what is T3. Okay. Then comes uh, point 0.4. How do you uh, find the temperature at point 0.4? Then uh, temperature at point 0.5. Okay. Temperature at point 0.4 and 5 will be found using the effectiveness of the heat exchanger. Okay. That I will explain uh, a little later. So these two points will be obtained using the effectiveness of heat exchanger and uh, the energy balance across the regenerative heat exchanger. Okay. And for uh, the process 5 to 6 which is uh, this process. This process is again an isentropic uh, expansion process, isentropic expansion process. So again we are similar to isentropic compression, we can write for this process T5 divided by T6 is equal to P5 by P6 to the power of gamma minus 1 by gamma. Again P5 and P6 are known, P5 is 1000 kilopascal, P6 is 100 kilopascal. So this uh, right hand side is known to us and uh, from the left hand side if you can find out T5, you can find T6 using this expression. Okay, so this is how we will be finding the different uh, state points. Okay, so the given information is like this, uh, QL is uh, 100 kilowatt and effectiveness of the heat exchanger is 0.8 
and the, the low side pressure that means the suction pressure is uh, 100 kilo Pascal and the discharge pressure is 1000 kilo Pascal and temperature T1 is minus 30 degree centigrade that is 243 Kelvin and temperature T2 is 10 degree centigrade that is 283 Kelvin. And for A the properties are given as Cp is 1.005, gamma is 1.4 and R is 0.287 kilo joule per kg Kelvin. Okay. So, as I have already uh, explained, for, uh, let us find out the power temperatures at various points. First the temperature at the exit of the compressor, as I have already told you this is an isentropic compression process. So, temperature at the exit of the compressor we find, uh, find by using this equation T3 is equal to T2 into P3 by P2 to the power of gamma minus 1 by gamma and if you substitute the values you find that T3 is 546.4 Kelvin. Now, we have to find out other temperatures T4, T5, etc. For this, as I told you, we will be using the effect, uh, uh, definition of heat exchanger effectiveness. From the definition of heat exchanger effectiveness, how do you define that? Let, let me explain. So, here the for this one, I am talking about the regenerative heat exchanger. You can define effectiveness as Q actual divided by Q maximum. Okay. And Q actual is actual heat transfer between the two streams, which is given by for example, if you are taking the cold stream, Q actual is nothing but M C P into T 2 minus T 1. Okay. M C P into T 2 minus T 1, where M is the mass flow rate of air, C P is the specific heat, T 2 and T 1 are the exit and inlet temperatures. This is the Q actual. What is the Q maximum? Uh, heat transfer rate will be maximum when the exit temperature T 2 is equal to T4. So, this is a condition under which the heat transfer rate will be maximum. That means, Q maximum is equal to MCP into T4 minus T1. So, same uh, mass, mass is flowing, MCP get cancelled. So, finally, you find that effectiveness of heat exchanger uh, is given by T2 minus T1 divided by T4 minus T1. Of course, you can also write this in terms of the hot air uh, stream or that means, you can write this also in terms of uh, T4 minus T5 divided by T4 minus T1. Okay, so you can use either this expression or this expression. So from that that expression, delta as I have already told you, effectiveness is delta T actual by delta T maximum, and that is given to be 0.8. Delta T actual uh, is T2 minus T1, T2 is 283 Kelvin and T1 is 243 Kelvin. So, the delta T actual is 40 Kelvin. From this, you can find out delta T max which is equal to T4 minus T1 that is equal to 40 by 0.8 that means 50 Kelvin. So, from this, you can find out T4 because T1 is known to us. Okay, So, T4 is T1 plus 50 that is 293 Kelvin. Now, what we do is we have to find out the temperature at the inlet to the turbine that is 0.5. For that, we apply the energy balance across the regenerative heat exchanger. This is again very simple. If you are assuming steady flow across the regenerative heat exchanger and take a control volume, take a control volume across the regenerative heat exchanger and if you apply the energy balance, energy balance is energy gained by the cold stream is equal to energy lost by the hot stream. Okay, So, energy gained by the cold stream is nothing but MCP into T2 minus T1. This should be equal to energy lost by the hot stream, which is equal to MCP T4 minus T5. So, in uh, for this uh, cold air standard cycle analysis, CP value remains same, Ma same mass is flowing. So, ma this values get cancelled. So, finally, from energy balance, we see that T2 minus T1 is equal to T4 minus T5. And T2 and T1 are known to us, T4 we have computed. So, from this, we can find out T5. That is what is done here. Uh, T2 minus T1 is equal to T4 minus T5. That means T5 is equal to T4 minus 40 because T2 minus T1 is 40. So, from this we get T5 as 253 Kelvin. So, finally, we have to find out what is the temperature at the exit of the turbine. Okay. So, this process as I have already told you is an isentropic expansion process. So, temperature at the exit of turbine is given by T6 is equal to T5 into P6 by P5 to the power of gamma minus 1 by gamma. And T5 just now we have found is uh, 253 Kelvin and P6 is 1000 kilo Pascal and P5 is 100 kilo Pascal. So, if you substitute these values, you find that T6 is equal to 131 Kelvin. Now, mass flow rate of air we have to find out. Mass flow rate of air is simply given by uh, refrigeration capacity by Cp into delta T. This you get by apl applying uh, energy balance across the low temperature heat exchanger. So, from energy balance across the low temperature heat exchanger, QL is equal to m dot into Cp into temperature rise that is T1 minus T6. Okay, so, from this you can find out what is m dot. Okay. 
So, so m dot is given to be 0 0.8884 kilo kg per second, q l is given as 100 kilowatts, c p is 1.005 and t 1 and t 6 are uh, known to us. Okay. Next is we have to compute the volumetric flow rate at compressor inlet. So, volumetric flow rate at compressor inlet is simply equal to mass flow rate into specific volume of air at that point. And since we are assuming the air to be perfect gas, specific volume of air is given by P by R T at compressor inlet. That means, uh, ultimately the volumetric flow rate V is equal to M divided by P 2 by R T 2, okay, where uh, P 2 is the uh, suction pressure that is 100 kilo Pascal, R is the gas constant and T 2 is the inlet temperature which is equal to 283 Kelvin. So, if you are substituting these values, you will find that volumetric flow rate is given by 0 0.7216 meter cube per second. Finally, we have to find the COP of the system. COP of the system is given by Q L divided by W net that is the net work input to the system. And net work input to the system is equal to uh, work input to the compressor minus work output from the turbine. Okay. This you can easily find out by again uh, applying uh, energy balance across uh, turbine and compressor. If you are applying energy balance across the turbine and neglect uh, delta Ke and delta Pe, that means delta Ke, delta Pe are negligible for both the components. Then from energy balance and uh, this is a reversible adiabatic process, there is no heat transfer. So, you find that uh, work output from the turbine okay, is simply equal to m dot C p into T 5 minus T 6. Okay. This is from the energy balance across the control volume. Similarly, work input to the uh, compressor W c is equal to m dot C p into T 3 minus T 2. Okay. So, m dot C p m dot C p is same. So, the net work input is nothing but the work input to the compressor minus work output from the turbine. You can see that the turbine is supplying uh, its useful work output to the compressor. Okay. So, the net work output is net work input is the difference between these two. So, that is what is written here W net is equal to W c minus W t that is equal to M c p into T 3 minus T 2 minus T 5 minus T 6. All the temperatures are known to us. So, if you substitute these values, you will find that net work input to the system is 126.25 kilowatt. Therefore, the COP is Q L divided by net work input that is 100 divided by 126.25 that comes out to be 0 0.792. Okay. So, this is how we can uh, calculate the uh, required performance parameters. So, you can uh, notice that first we have written, uh, drawn the system schematic, then we have drawn the cycle and T s diagram because here T s diagram is more useful. Then uh, from the given input information, we, uh, we have obtained the state points, uh, property set all other state points. And once you have the property set all the state points, all that you have to do is apply proper mass and energy balance equations across each component or across the system and find out the required parameters. Okay. Now, the second part of the problem is we have to compare the performance of this system with a system which does not have regenerative heat exchanger. Okay. That means a simple system. So, a simple system I will just show the T s diagram. You can see that in a simple system uh, cycle is given by this is the simple system okay, 1 2 dash 4 4 dash. Okay. So, again you have isentropic uh, compression, isentropic expansion and uh, isobaric heat rejection, isobaric heat extraction. Since you do not have any uh, regenerative heat exchanger, there is no heat exchange between hot and cold streams. Okay. And it, uh, we know from the given input information that this temperature is minus 30 degree centigrade and this temperature T 4 is 293 Kelvin. Okay, so, these two temperatures are given, we have to find out the uh, remaining temperatures. And since the pressures are same 100 kilo Pascal uh, here and 1000 kilo Pascal, we can find out T 2 dash is nothing but T 1 into P 2 dash divided by P 1 to the power of gamma minus 1 by gamma. Similarly, T 4 dash is T 4 into P 1 by P 4 P 1 by P 4 to the power of gamma minus 1 by gamma. All the pressures are known, T 1 and T 4 are known. So, we can find out T 2 dash and T 4 dash. Okay. So, that is what is done. So, from that you find that the temperature at the exit of compressor is 469.16 Kelvin. Temperature at the exit of turbine is 151.76 Kelvin. And mass flow rate of air again from energy balance across the low temperature heat exchanger is 1.0906 kg per second. And volumetric flow rate is 0 0.7606 and finally, COP of the system you find out the net work input which turns out to be 93.08 kilowatts and COP is found to be 1.074. Okay. 
So, this is the performance without any regenerative heat exchanger. Now, we can quickly compare the performance with and without regenerative heat exchanger. So, you can see that when you are using a regenerative heat exchanger, temperature at the exit of compressor is much higher compared to this. So, okay, this is a drawback actually. But what is the advantage of using regenerative heat exchanger? Temperature at the exit to the turbine is much less compared to the uh, one without a regenerative heat exchanger.